justified to say that in case of doubt, you have to consider an ecumenical council under similar terms as a sacrament or a sacramental. In both cases, whenever you talk about the validity of a sacrament, you have to talk about matter, form, and intention. I explain at Holy Mass, the matter is bread and wine. The form is the words of consecration, ikis denim karik sanguinis mei, novit eternis dementi, and so on. And the intention has to be in all seven sacraments to do not what the church wants to do, not to do what the church has done, not to do what the church might do, but to do what the church does. What is it what the church does? Well, whatever the church has always done and always will do and intends to do. This is what the church does. Simplify it. If you don't have the intention of doing what the church does, the sacrament uh, will, as long as it's indifferent, still be valid. But if any, anyone who has uh, a publicly deviating, different, publicly different intention, be it that she, he simply want, doesn't want to do it or he wants to do something different, in that case the sacrament will not be valid. If we want to know if Vatican II was a council, we therefore, since, as we can see from history, the mere fact that the Pope called it together, that the Pope called it a council, and that the Pope blessed it afterwards, is not sufficient. We have to see if there was the right intention, the right form, and the right matter at Vatican II. Father, if I may interject at this sure. point. Uh, ecumenical, we, we, and today we have, a, I think, a different idea of ecumenical than, than you are proposing to what you're saying. Could you explain Thank you, John. That's word? extremely important because the word ecumenical obviously <clears throat> today means let us all gather together in the Holy Spirit and forget our differences and worship whatever God you like. This is not ecumenical at all because the word ecumenical is Greek. In Greek it's oikomene. Oikos in Greek is the house. Oikomene is the household. Everything that belongs to the household. Now, take an average family. It's a household, right? Who is part of the oikomene? The house, obviously. Father, mother, children, and if they're living together, grandparents, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles, whatever. Those who belong there, that's oikomene. And from the very beginning of church history, it was called ecumenical, not because heretics were allowed to participate, on the contrary. They were safeguarding their, uh, uh, wherever the council took place, in order to make sure no heretic and no schismatic was let in. Because this was ecumenical. It was a, uh, an event that belonged to the household and was none of the outsider's business. So, all the bishops in union with the Pope were called. Nobody else. Period. That's what it means, ecumenical council. At Vatican II, that's one of the things, it wouldn't invalidate the council, but it's one of the things that didn't happen. As a matter of fact, John XXIII made a contract with Moscow that he will not allow the council to condemn communism or Soviet Russia or the satellite states or, as a matter of fact, any other communist state or communism as such. Uh, simply in order to have the great, great, extraordinary, unbelievable pr privilege granted of having two orth Russian Orthodox KGB agents participating in the council. This, of course, is absurd, but it wouldn't invalidate the council. So it's an interesting historic note on one who committed treason in the Catholic Church. Some people say he's blessed, I say he's not. And, uh, but we have to stay with the facts, otherwise we'd be sitting here at 2 o'clock at night. The facts are, what is the intention for a council? What is the right intention? All the dictionaries will, will agree on that. Not just the dictionaries. I'm, I'm, for simplicity's sake here, I'm quoting the dictionaries. I, uh, I cannot give you... Uh, I have not the, the list of books memorized that I studied in order to uh, see if you could really talk about an invalidated council or not. I want, at this occasion, by the way, I want to underline the fact that whatever you think about Father Hess, uh, the, the very thought 
that uh, the ecumenical, so-called ecumenical council Vatican II was not indeed an ecumenical council at all, occurred to me the first time in 1996, believe it or not, not earlier than that. In 1996, when I read a, a series of, when I started to read a series of articles, beautiful articles, profound articles, excellent articles, uh, in the uh, CC No No. That's a publication that, if I'm right, in the United States is called Rome Courier. Is that right? Uh, yeah, well, anyway, in, 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 in France it's called Cour uh, Courrier de Rome, in uh, German it's called Rome Courrier, and in the original Italian uh, it's called CC si, si, No No. You remember CC si, si, No No means yes, yes, no, no. Uh, Esto hologos humon, nai nai, u u, as Christ said, this may be your words, yes, yes, no, no. He didn't want twisted answers and lies. And in this wonderful publication, where I've never found anything but uh, beautiful theology, I really started to understand that uh, we were all gravely mistaken, thinking that Vatican II might be something like uh, a less than perfect council or a council containing errors or whatever each one of us was thinking. I really understood that it was not a council at all, simply because I said, there has to be the intention, the matter, and the form. What is the right intention of a council, except to do what the church does? Now, what does it mean? What does the church do when a council is called? We understand that the intention must be to do what the church does. But what does the church do when a council is called? Well, again, on this, all the sources I consulted, except poor Ludwig Ott, I say again, I highly recommend Ludwig Ott. But we are, all of us, including the Pope, we are not infallible. The Pope only sometimes is infallible and nobody else. Uh, most of the sources agree that the purpose of a council, intention, the purpose of council is to condemn errors and to define doctrine. Pope John XXIII when he announced his supposedly <laughs> inspired decision to call a council, said that we will not condemn anything in this council, it shall be a pastoral council. That's what he called a contradictio in adiecto, a contradiction as to its terms. A council, all the 20 ecumenical councils, and I say again, the first eight were called by the emperor. The first eight called by the emperor, the other councils called by the popes, were called together in order to clear up doctrine and to destroy error. In uh, 1786, a bunch of uh, crazy bishops called together by an even more crazy uh, Austrian Habsburg uh, Archduke in Tuscany gathered together in the uh, otherwise little known town of Pistoia in order to decide, quote unquote, about reforms in the church. It was because of political circumstances, I think it, you have to remember it was the time of Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, it needed until 1799, until Pope Pius VI published one of the most unusual documents in church history, under the title, for those who are interested, find the document on your, uh, what's that beeping thing on, on your screen, uh, the, the website. Uh, find it there, because you can find it there, somebody told me. Uh, it's called Auctorem Fidei, I spell that for those who want to, really want to do their own research. A-U-C-T-O-R-E-M F-I-D-E-I Alpha, un Uniform, Charlie, Tango, Echo, Mike, the second word is Foxtrot, India, Delta, Echo, India. Find the document for the simple reason it is exceptional. Most of the papal bulls and encyclicals, a bull is when a pope decides about things, and encyclical is when he just teaches. Uh, most of the papal bulls and encyclicals are addressed to the fellow patriarchs, cardinals, bishops, archbishops, and whatever prelates in the church. Not so, Octorem Fide. 
Pope Pius VI wanted every Christi Fidelis, Christ faithful, to read that document. And very unusual, he addressed the document Ad omnes Christi Fidelis, to all faithful in Christ. And there he says, I quote the most important line, the purpose of a synod, the word synod is the Greek term for the Latin word council. Council is concilium, when you gather together, synodos in Greek, hohodos means the way, syn means like cum, concilium, concilium is cum cilium. Synodos is the same word, it's the Greek translation of council, and council is the Latin translation of synod. Pastor 6 says, the purpose of a synod is to clarify terms, not to complicate them. Obviously, because the truth is infinitely simple, ultimately, since God is infinitely simple. God is not only infinitely, infinitely simple, God is absolutely simple. If God is absolutely simple, the higher the truth, the simpler it is. Therefore, you cannot uh, possibly claim to pronounce the truth if you complicate it. That's why Pius VI said the purpose of a synod is to clarify terms. What did Pope Pius IX do in 1854 when he made uh, the Immaculate Conception a uh, dogma? Simple. He didn't say anything new. He just said, this is exactly the way it has to be understood, period, and that period is forever. So, uh, Father, before you go on to that, sure. could you expand a bit on a bull and an encyclical? Oh, I just said, a bull is a, uh, is a document in which the Pope uh, makes decisions, like in Quo Primo, where he says that this missile has to be used forever. And uh, an encyclical usually is one of his teaching documents. So the papal bull is for all the church? So is the encyclical. What's the difference? I just said. It's a, historic, it's a historic distinction between actually a, a few pages of paper, more or less few, and signed by the Pope. There is, a, uh, there, there is the possibility of a papal constitution, there can be a papal bull, there can be a papal against encyclical. Basically, uh, it's all the ordinary magisterium or the ordinary power of the Pope. Uh, a power he enjoys not because he's a good man, which he very often wasn't, but a power that he enjoys simply because he has been elected Pope. And the Pope, the Pope, as all pastors in the Church, has three powers. The power of governing, the power of teaching, and the uh, jurisdictional power. So a bull is, it has no more weight than an encyclical? No. A bull usually is uh, more decisive.